spoken word team for giving us this opportunity. I'm gonna be perf I'm gonna be performing two pieces. One, one is about one is titled "Confessions of an Addict." So let me start with this. I guess you'll understand what it is about. Hi, I'm Kenny, and I'm an addict. I fail to trace back to when I fell face first into my own trap, and I hear to heal from an addiction. I must go back to the roots, but I'm afraid there is no going back. Not this time. I tried deleting all the tracks we used to call ours after listening to them for hours and hours. I guess they ceased to be ours at some point. But the aftermath of what used to be me and you is longer than when we still were, and that hurts. I know the path you chose is what's best for you, at least for the moment, but it's currently 8 or 9 on a Friday, and you still are a recurrent theme in my dreams. See, my addiction is different, for I've never really enjoyed hard liquor or cold beers. I was never worried about my addiction. They say say no to that first puff and you'll be okay, but the touch of your lips on mine was just as enticing. My addiction seems to never stop. Who knew texting you every day would leave me with withdrawal symptoms that almost hurt physically? I still get that tingling sensation in my stomach when I leave my phone home for 30 minutes not to find a text back from you. Was what I said not as interesting? Maybe I should have used your favorite emoji, but I guess I'll never know. I'm an addict. I swallow my pride rarely, but that extra Y on OK last night got me thinking about our kids in the back seat on Christmas Eve. In case you don't already know, my addiction was not one to trees, needles, or pills. It was that of your hand in mine. And like all addictions, I'll never get enough of you. Because dear Florence, my tolerance got stronger. And I needed more and more of you until I could no longer have you. I envy Olivia Rodrigo when she proudly recalls her talks over having a driver's license, for we didn't even get that far. They say all addictions end with rehab, overdose, or jail, but mine, though legal, it might just be lethal. I'm an addict. More specifically, living with a mental illness. It's titled, What It's Like Living with a Mental Illness. The second worst thing about having a mental illness after the terrorizing pain that your body endures daily is watching yourself change, unable to return to who you once were. If I were to tie what having a mental illness is, I would put it in the back section of the supermarket where nobody ever really goes, labeled pain. Like a long-term loan, be sure that mental illness will take away your joy and will of life every month when your salary comes in. The difference is you'll be debited every day until you're bankrupt. Having a mental illness is pain. Nine years ago, if I was asked what having a mental illness looks like, the picture looked much simpler and vivid, for it simply portrayed the woman on Monday mornings who threatened, who threatened to throw rocks on cars early morning on the road besides the hangover males who strolled home after a long weekend. But that was before I met mine. I wish I had the audacity of Judah to deny that my mental illness was mine, but time and time again she refuses for us to part ways. I tried amitriptyline, lexotan, nosina, you name it, to get her out of me. Church benches. I even tried writing. But this is loyal as a... She creeped on me like a fly on the right eye of a royal Inyambo. As small as she looked, the pain she bought was one I fought for too long with all efforts hurled into the trash can. Having a mental illness is pain. It's having sleepless nights turning from side to side as you recall the night you failed to abide to the rules you so harshly set for yourself. It's feeling like a bad person because your mind somehow finds a way to get rid of every good deed of yours. Having a mental illness is torture. Though not orchestrated by King Jong Un, it fully robs you of the ability to see reality for what it truly is. It's moving from doctor to doctor, giving you fake hope by changing your prescription and suggesting you do start swimming, for it might help your back just to go back over and over again. It's tiring, for it leaves you craving to just be normal. It's feeling the guilt and shame of a serial killer, because somehow as you had cereal in the morning, you had a dirty thought you did quite want. But how am I supposed to allow to be loved or tell you my thoughts when they're scarier than a man with tattoos on his neck walking home? behind the family from Arkansas in the middle of the night. It's hoping, praying to go back to the person you once were. 
It's wanting to meet in person but not being able to. It's breaking into puddles, sweats in your room only after an intrusive thought decided to ruin your morning. It's feeling pain in your drawers and watching your weight go down one by one daily. It's looking at baby pictures or your fifth birthday at 5 a.m., admiring the person who though shares your name. Must have hid so well inside this body that you call yours. After all, that same kid was too good at hide and seek. He even hid from himself. Thank you.